Let's try mono printing. The first thing we're going to do is go shopping at the store. That's what I call gathering supplies for what we're going to need. We'll need a piece of paper, a Q-tip, a texture comb, and a paintbrush. Let's take a closer look and see what we're gathering. One piece of paper, one Q-tip, that's called a texture comb, and a paintbrush. If you sit at an even number table, then you will be using the warm colors today. That's red, orange, and yellow. Odd numbers, you'll be using the cool colors. That's green, blue, and purple. Next art class, we will switch. Begin by picking any color that you like and painting the surface of your circle. This circle is called a jelly plate because it has the texture of something squishy like jello. You can use any colors on your tray that you like, but don't forget to wash your brush between getting a new color. I'll show you how in just a moment. You're going to paint the whole circle, but don't paint too slowly because we don't want the paint to dry before we print. When you're finished, you can use your texture comb. Drag your texture chrome across the surface or the top of the jelly plate. Drag it across, don't press it on, before laying a piece of paper on top and massaging with the flat part of your hand. Pull it up and check it out. This is called a mono print. My big old head got in the way, but what I'm doing here is signing my name. When you're finished with your first print, sign your name and take it to the drying rack. And then you can do another print. This time I'm going to show you how to clean your brush between. You move your brush around in the water, you draw an X on SpongeBob. You need to do that before getting a new color. That way your paintbrush stays nice and clean and so does your paint tray. Sometimes I like to drag my brush over the rim or the lip of the paint tray. That helps to clean it a little bit too. All right, here I go. I'm filling up my circle once again with different colors of paint. When you're finished, why not try using a Q-tip to draw a variety of lines? So I'm drawing a loop-de-loop -loop line, some straight lines. I could add some zigzags, bouncing lines. If my Q-tip gets too dirty on one side, I can just flip it over and use the other side. Think of all of the different kinds of lines that you can draw while your paint is wet. But remember, to work pretty quickly, you want the paint to stay wet. If it starts to dry, then when you pull up your print, it will not show up. Let's see if I did this correctly. Notice how I match my paper up with the paper that's in the tray. That's right, the two papers need to match up before you lower the paper to make your print. Peel it off and check out my mono print. It's called a mono print because mono means one. When you take your print to the drying rack, you wanna hold it like a cafeteria tray. Never ever hold it by your side. If you hold it by your side, your clothes could get dirty. When you're putting it on the drying rack, it doesn't go like that, it hangs off. And if you just try to force it, you're going to end up ruining your artwork. The best thing to do is pinch the top of the paper before sliding it into the drying rack. A little bit will stick off. Don't stack your artwork on top of somebody else's because then it will stick. Use the next row up. Try sliding one corner in at a time. When it's time for us to clean up, use a baby wipe to clean off your jelly print tray and your texture comb. Make sure you give your paintbrush a bath in the water tray before pinching it dry on the baby wipe. Just one baby wipe, please. When you stand behind your pushed in chair with a zero in the air to show me that you're finished, make sure you've put away everything first. All right, let's get started.